So what is working right now to get views on YouTube? And what are the best tactics for growing your channel, breaking through a plateau if you've noticed that your views are down? In today's episode of the Think Media Podcast, I have two special guests. We're going to be actually doing a deep dive on a gardening channel, talking about tactics for growth, and there'll be lessons we can all learn. And then we're also going to be doing a deep dive on a real estate channel that is using video marketing and using YouTube to basically grow their business. And so if you're a business owner or wanting to learn some more advanced strategies, we're gonna be hitting that. And then I wanna encourage you to take advantage of the time codes and chapters because those will organize where we have the deeper dive coaching sessions and then Q and A. So I'll be answering the questions of the guests that are live today and you'll be able to go take advantage of those specific questions so that you can ultimately grow your channel faster. My name is Sean Cannell, and this is the Coffee with Cannell show. This episode is brought to you by StreamYard. StreamYard is our go-to platform here at Think Media for live streaming to Facebook and YouTube and for recording our video podcast. It has an incredibly easy to use interface for built-in branding, transitions, text lower thirds, and seamlessly bringing on guests. And they just added an awesome new feature called local recording. This allows you to take the quality to another level by separating out your audio and video from your guests, giving you more control over your content for later use. This feature is perfect for video and podcast creators. And so to get a special deal on StreamYard right now and to see all the features that are included, just go to stream with think.com that is stream with think.com welcome back to the coffee with Kennel show today i'm sipping on some ethiopia yerga chef coffee single origin black and white coffee roasters oh so good and i'm curious what are you drinking if you're here live uh we're about to dive in with robert and one of the cool things though about our sponsor Streamyard is the ability to produce a show like this we actually multi-stream on youtube and facebook the fact we can bring in guests create content um and uh have all these different features where we can play videos and integrate all that kind of stuff so check out streamwiththink.com if you haven't tapped into the power of Streamyard yet uh, a huge asset that we love using here at think media but today let's get into our first coaching session with robert kennedy the third robert welcome to the show Hey, Sean, listen, I'm so glad to be here, buddy. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Whoa, you got the skills, man. How'd you do? How'd you do the confetti? That was powerful. Oh, I know. Well, that that's the, you know, uh, stream deck. Nice. Stream deck. That is stream deck. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, um, hey, tell us a little bit about you, what you do. I'm going to pull your channel up so people can see your content. Tell us about your history and then we'll get into your specific questions. Fantastic. So I am my my core is communication. I work with real estate agents, real estate associations and brokerages now specifically about how to be more confident on camera, how to communicate more effectively and how to present their ideas with, with confidence. And so public speaking, presentation skills, that's kind of the core of what I do. And I do some of that in the area of video these days. And that's my history. My gosh. Yeah, I don't know. That's a long How question. long have you been doing the channel? You know, so I've had my channel, I would years. say, did, well, so, years old. <laughs> so he's showing all the old stuff. So I've had a channel for a while, but I think it's just in the last six or seven months that I said, okay, you know what? Let me not just put stuff on there. Um, let me become a little bit more targeted and serious with what I'm doing. And even then it's still been, um, consistency has been a, a struggle with, with, with lifing. Yeah, but gotcha. Well, excited to help uh, today. And so we'll jump in your first question. You know, your audio does sound good, but there is a little click kind of clicks on and off clicks on and off. It's not like a oh. clip the audio level sounds really great, but there's some kind of a clicking noise. And so, uh, you know, we're mid talk. So did, no big deal. I think everything's okay. coming across fine. But just FYI, if that's ever happened before, and there's some easy fix for it. Um, but let me know um, what uh, your question is as we dive in and I can uh, give some feedback on your channel as well. 
Yeah, I think the the big question is the in going through the the uh, R's, the seven R's here. I've done the research and I've done you tried the community tab idea, did some questions on LinkedIn through my mailing list, and I get questions from Answer the Public and all of those different places, but I don't feel like I'm really hitting questions that my audience is specifically asking me that. And I don't know that I'm having some success there. So I'm struggling with where to go all in here. Mm. Some of the questions that I get are technology related and some are communication related. And I'm kind of trying to figure out, okay, what's that space that I really lean into that will cause people to come to the channel as a resource? Yeah. So, um, you know, when we teach answer specific questions, Mm -hmm. You mentioned a few tools that everybody listening could take advantage of. I think, you know, answerthepublic.com is a website. Also ask.com people should tap into. VidIQ has um, kind of their keyword research tool and will show you trending videos. Um, but I do think there's also the opportunity to just turn the consistent questions that your audience asks you into videos. So let me ask you, have you, how many people are like on your email list or or maybe your core following. You have 1,600 subscribers, but how about email list? Do you have phone numbers in your business? We're not that big in the phone numbers. We do have some text. That's probably in the low hundreds at this point. We've probably got about 2,000 2, plus on the email list that we're using right now. See, so like... One of my favorite things to do in your situation would be to like schedule a free Zoom call. Um, and in terms of really, because we say the creator who understands the viewer best wins. So if you like you're saying, hey, how do I really get in touch with the questions and the pain points of my audience? You have a unique advantage for some. They're starting from scratch and they don't have 2000 emails and a couple hundred on a text list. Um, and you could do this at any level, but my, my thought is if you could get 10, it could be less than that, but, but chances are right. with the size of your list, you could probably get five, 10, 15, 20 people the, in a way, the smaller the group, the better. And just to have some conversations, um, for me, this a lot of times happens at, at events. I just got back from Miami at the vault conference and, you know, I was in a room for, of CEOs who paid $10,000 a ticket, the, the mindset that could block people, right? It was like, oh, well, these are advanced people. Clearly they, um, this is what I think they need. And here's what I've learned. We're all basically 100% wrong when we think we know what people need. Yeah. And even if we kind of have an idea of what they need, how they would word it, the level of sophistication, I was talking with another pretty significant influencer in my DMs, you know, and she was asking about tech things. And uh, I started to ask even more, are you running the camera? Do you have someone on your team running the camera? You got to understand like the unique pain points of your target audience. And then you also want to recommend recognize patterns because some of our most viral content, and when I say viral, we teach VFM, viral for me. So viral might just be 10,000 views. Like if you had a 10,000 viewed video, right? That would, you'd be like, oh my gosh, that's a hundred X than some of my other views. Well, when you strike a chord and you really position what it is people are looking for, what it is they want, um, then things, then growth can really follow. So I think there's out of an actual kind of case study focus group, what, um, and what I, I brought in out, what other channels do you watch on YouTube? I would ask this group, what, um, how, what are the ways you're trying to grow your business? I wouldn't necessarily just say, what videos do you want me to make? I would just be trying to like right. really understand them. How much time a week do you have to create content? How much, um, what kind of content do you want to create? What, you know, and I would ask, I would come up with like 30 good questions. And you're just kind of learning and you find out that, okay, you end up coming with a title that's like how to, you know, grow your real estate business in under five hours a week. And then the hook of that video and the thumbnail and everything ends up, it ends up kind of going viral in the real estate community and event and leading you to more clients than you could ever handle. Like you're one video away from, from like doubling or 10 xing your business on the other side of the power of the YouTube algorithm. But there is the hard work of figuring out the clarity of 
What are people going through? And that isn't a one-time thing. That is a lifestyle. The content creator lifestyle is, this is why we consistently ask community tab questions. Um, on on yeah. your community tab, looks like you have a good one here. You know, what's the biggest mistake that people make when, when uh, doing video? This is interesting. We could do this together on Coffee with Cannell. Boring, cheap equipment, no structure, bad lighting. Probably boring or no structure for me is the biggest mistake that I would think, man, I'm torn. I'm going to vote. Uh, I think that uh, I think that boring, not relevant. And that's 50 percent. Uh, bad lighting was another one. So you also could do an open ended question and you did. Uh, you're doing it. So, hey, you know, props to that. And I see this isn't really getting distribution. That was five months ago, though. So and and if if you're not getting data and feedback there. That's why I would tap the list and maybe, you know, you might even do a giveaway. Like I'm going to be giving away a free coaching session or just something, but like you want to get people. What's also wild is actually from business owner to business owner. If 22 people jump on that zoom call, it, it probably yeah. can lead to business directly too. like two of those people end up wanting to work with you. So the, the ROI of doing that is a whole separate thing. Um, not understanding fully your business, but if like, that's, I think there's that opportunity, but there's nothing more valuable than the creator who understands the viewer best wins. And I would argue this. I've been doing this. I've been doing YouTube 16 years, video for 20. Nolan Molt, Omar al Takori, Kyle Anderson um, are YouTube experts. We've been doing Growth Video Live for five years. Mm -hmm. um, Andrea, Melissa, all of us, like, you know, this is the Think Media team, you know, like, We've had we've had moderate success. People might say they look at our podcast channel or other channel. Here's my mentality. We don't even know who we're talking to yet. We don't understand our audience. We need to ask better questions. We need to understand them deeper. We need to have greater empathy. Sometimes in thick media, Nolan would tell you, be like, bro, wh why are we making these videos? Like, what are we even? Why don't we actually make? videos aligned with the pain are we answering questions no one's asking and and this isn't keyword research this is like a deeper level than that right. and and i oftentimes talk to our team it's like after we've won the game we get in the locker room and talk about how we could do better so a lot of times i'm like it's good like if you're doing answer the public that's great keyword research that's great too but i think the mentality is is the shoshin always come back to a beginner mentality and there's so much gold waiting for, this is a this is true for the product you create, the offer you create, the videos you create, the branding, the positioning, you resonating with the customer, you resonating with people. What people often say, you will always make the sale and you will always get the customer when you can explain the prospect's problem better than they can. Like when you understand even what they're struggling with in their mind better than them, the only way to do that is by talking to them. And I know I've answered long here, but I feel like this conversation is has some good value. I learned an aha moment from Dave Ramsey, who's been on the radio for 30 years and YouTube for 10 and 20 million views a month. And he's building up a whole empire and, you know, $400 million a year in his business. I don't, don't quote me on that, whatever. It's something like that. And, uh, and, and one of the things his staff has told me at multiple levels of the company mm -hmm. is they said, Dave, understands and is closer to our community than anybody else in the company, 1200 employees. Mm, Dave wow. has more empathy and connection with the community. And why does he go live for two hours a day, answering caller questions five days a week, two hours a day. It used to be three hours a day because he doesn't want to become too far removed because everything that he hears as he actually has real conversations with people's voice. That's why I want you to schedule a zoom call or one-on-one -on -one phone calls, text people and be like, Hey, I'm doing free 30 minute coaching sessions. Text me back and I'll jump on the phone with you right now. Like talk to one person. Why? Because he starts to hear their stories, their pain point, what they're going through. And there's so many misconceptions and mindsets that we all create. And even if we started well, we start to have this distancing that happens. All this expertise that you've already built creates distance from the person who's just starting and their fears and their uh, the emotions they're going through and all these different things. And so the creator who understands the viewer best wins. By the way, this is now getting kind of meta. One of the reasons I'm recommitted to Coffee with Cannell is to hang out with you. Because yeah. I, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm so busy trying to like 
CEO responsibilities and like meetings and, and talking about content and doing all this kind of stuff. And like, in on the one hand, even doing this quote unquote, doesn't make sense. And it was actually Dave who re-inspired me where I was like, this is the most important part of my week is going to be yeah. my conversation with you. And then my conversation with dirt musicians. And then, uh, the Q and a after this, because I need to like stay into like, what are the pain points? So has this been helpful? I mean, I think this could really. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I am already committing to getting that call scheduled before the end of this month or within the next two weeks, and then just starting to push out requests to hop on that zoom call. So yeah, absolutely, man. All right, next we'll land the plane here, but uh, uh, let's look at your channel and I've got some feedback with you is that for your channel. Is that cool? I'm excited. Let's go. All right. So uh, the uh, the having said all of that, I think there's another opportunity that you have and there's a couple things that that jump off uh, the page immediately. One, it's a little busy. Titles okay. even feel a little busy and thumbnails feel a li little busy for me. So how real estate agents can create videos easily using chat GPT and other AI tools. It's just long and it's makes sense. But then what also is, is tough. So to kind of try to break this into tips, less text in the thumbnail, mm -hmm. do not echo the title in the thumbnail. So the fact that the title already says this, it says that the, the thumbnail doesn't need it. Um, it. It could say something different. That's your opportunity is the thumbnail can say something different than what the title says. Yep. And then think about how you could maybe simplify some of these titles down. So I, like one of the things I like to think about videos is, is similar to a funnel. And so let me start with like email marketing. What is the purpose of an email subject line? The purpose of an email subject line is only one thing. Get someone to stop and open the email. What yep. is not the purpose of an email subject line? To get some, to explain the answer, to share information, to teach somebody a bunch of things. Like it literally only has one purpose. Saying that, sometimes the most literal answer is not the best answer for like what the subject, so the subject line could say like, inside this email, you're going to learn these three things. The subject line could also say, hey, H-E-Y, famous subject line. And the reason it was so powerful is because it was sent from Barack Obama to his email list. And so it's just, people are like, dude, it's very personal. Like it's who was sending it. So all, and it had a crazy open rate. It, it was only trying to do one thing. So that's when we think about, okay, my thumbnail and my title is, just trying to get the internet to watch the video. So when you're like how real estate agents can create videos easily using chat GPT and other tools, it's if you confuse, you lose. I'm kind of already, it's creating a lot of friction right at the beginning, but all right. you, what's the purpose? Just so taking the analogy, what's the purpose of a title and a thumbnail and a topic just to get someone to click on the video. Now we're not trying to trick anyone, but it's, we're just trying to, so it's not clickbait, but we are trying to just get them to click through so that in the hook, we could unpack things a little bit deeper, a little bit, a little bit more. So then let's look. They're taking over. Okay. They're taking over. Welcome back to. So kind of a, a creative shot at, at doing a hook. And can you hear that okay? Does the volume sound okay for you? Yep, volume's good. Um, and so uh, I, I get like personal opinion and I, one, creative, and I'm glad you in, and did the creati creativity. Two, I get it. Like it's kind of a stretch for my mind to go, okay, who's they? It's probably AI. It's probably whatever, you know? But it was 10 seconds long. Mm -hmm. And before we're into any kind of clarity of the next thing, let's to keep the going. Channel. So if you haven't heard, AI tools are taking over the world. They're popping up everywhere and they're taking over. Well, I want to talk about how real estate agents can use these AI tools for good.
But before I jump into that, I just want to remind you to hit the subscribe button and smash, punch, decompress that bell so that you can get notified every time I drop a new video. So let's talk about these AI tools for just a moment. So even in your time codes and chapters, what's what's really a hard thing to process is the idea that theoretically, this whole first minute, 30 seconds is unnecessary. Like, mm -hmm. we don't need to ask for like and subscribe yet. And, and this is 2023 advice. We, yep. we call it now the value-based hook. Like, you, ask, you could ask for that stuff at the end of the video. So the opening kind of skit could work, could work, not work. I oftentimes say that, like, the safer play is to go practical because comedy or humor is a risk. It's always a risk. <laughs> but a lot of people teach yeah. this. Do people understand it? Even comedy from different stages. It worked in one room. It didn't work in another room. I'm not trying to talk anybody out of it because if it works, it works like gangbusters. But if it yeah. doesn't work, it ends up wasting time. And then you got the like, it's, you know, then you also like AI is generally taken over. But if you, if you think about the audience, well, yeah, but like they're going to get that information elsewhere. They're, maybe they're clicking right. around on the internet and they're watching other things about the good and the bad of AI, but that's not the point. This whole topic could be positioned uh, like it could be based around a case study, like actually how one uh, or how I closed a deal or got more leads, how I got 30 leads in 30 days using chat GPT. Like there's so many different angles and this is the skill to master, right? This is also ultimately what through VRA and VRA masters we want to kind of think through is topic comes ahead of title and thumbnail. So even like what ultimately is it? Why do you're also at a, you're at a place in the customer journey where they already want to create videos. Does chat GPT right. even create videos? How many AI tools? So the simplifying of the promise, the topic, the title, the thumbnail and the hook. And what I also wonder is the video could theoretically start like here. It could. So let's get into it. So the first AI tool that I'll. So you might say, so. All right. So, so, so if you make a really good promise and a really good, um, uh, title, it already told, it may already frame the context. So the first second of the video can just start delivering. One of my yeah. favorite, uh, videos, we call this the value-based hook to illustrate this is so Nolan did this video on think media, 50 YouTube video ideas that'll blow up your channel. Let's watch the beginning. You can make a product okay. review video. These Here we go. Number one is a first impressions video. Find something new or trending in your space. Give us your thoughts. Give us your first impression. That's the beginning of the video. The <laughs> first line is number one is, well, so let's think about this. You already know it's 50 easy YouTube ideas. You know, they'll blow up your channel. Thumbnail is very simple. Three or less words. Very simple yep. thumbnail. And you know what's actually wild about this is what people say to the point, no fluff, no long intro. I got 30 replies and 1,800 likes. The By the way, the creator who understands the viewer best wins, now this comes away from the real estate agent. It's just un, it, the psychology of online users in general. Like people, mm -hmm. if the title and thumbnail is clear, I know why I'm here. So you don't have to necessarily restate it. So he's like, Number one, like, cause it's 50. So, you know, you're in the list, like not I'm Nolan, not I was born in Yakima, Washington, not like my favorite, you know, not hit like, not I was this, like you just, and so there's still a point where in certain content, you may frame it up. You may, you may need to explain more. There may be some certain things, but, but the essence of everything I want to deliver to you in that is, is kind of the funnel of I think topic could be simplified, titles could be streamlined, maybe create a little bit more mystery or just be trimmed down a little bit. Yeah. Thumbnails, your thumbnail creation ability is great, but but I would change the thumbnail text, the rule of three, meaning three total objects um, and th three or less words if possible. No need to echo the the title in the thumb in the actual thumbnail because it already says real estate agents in 2023, so it doesn't need to see real estate agents again. It doesn't need to say five videos, um, yep. and and so all of that. And then the last big idea as we fully land the plane and get ready for our next coaching ses session is that video for business owners or video for real estate. 
you need to have self-awareness. This should be encouraging, but self-awareness that your niche is, is small anyways. So right. you, you sh it, it's not, it's not a viral niche. That's why VFM viral for me could be 2000 views because mm -hmm. if we're already a, a self-aware real estate agent that wants to make videos, then it's such a small group of people and a small group of people searching and a small group of people looking for things. So when you've dialed in your business model, lots of our students though are, are cool with that. Cause they're also like, yeah, well, if I do an agency or client work, I only need five clients a month. So I don't need that many views. So on the one hand, that's good news. But the big idea that I'd be asking, the big question I'd be asking is what broader appeal content could I create that is still not shifting off brand or violating my niche, but could bring people into my world. So what's broader than video marketing, marketing, um, what's broader than literally AI and video marketing in general. So it could, could be five marketing trends. Every real estate agent needs to know, um, what's broader appeal, how to, increase transactions in a down market still a marketing mm -hmm. concept but it's just it's now it's at a higher level because i don't know that i need to use ai and use video and all this kind of stuff down deep yet i know that my real estate business is suffering though and so you know three tr like things agents do how can i talk to agents at a macro meet them and then they can discover how i can help them so if so that also would be this is why there's like two sides to answer the public and all the tech tools, but also then sort of like the marketing and psychology side of things in general, kind of thinking the intuition of thinking, all right, there are definitely some 10,000, even a hundred thousand quarter million viewed videos that I think you can create. Yeah. Um, but if they're going to get that many views, they're going to be broader appeal. And the benefit of that, again, not too broad that like, I'm just, I'm just chasing views. Um, but broad enough that they could bring in a whole new flux of customers. Any final follow-up questions or thoughts on that advice? No, I think I'm good. I, I, I think I have the, the, the zoom call plan and the con the feedback regarding creating mystery, utilizing the rule of three, going through my thumbnails, not necessarily matching those to the titles, but really just focusing on grabbing attention is, yeah, that that's a lot to for me to kind of walk back and 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 put into practice immediately. So yeah, we could spend a lot of time going deeper, but this this is good. <laughs> Robert, I appreciate you so much, and uh, I really want to thank you for coming on Coffee with Cannell today. Thanks, Sean. I appreciate it. Love being here, man. All right, take care. Bye, my friends. That was a uh, fun call, and we have Dirt Magicians coming up in just a second. But if you haven't smashed like yet, hit the like button. And I would love to know your aha moment that you have already had. What had, did you like best? Because the reason we do these also is so you can think about what's my next video, what's my next action item, what's the next thing I need to improve on my channel um, and be applying some of these strategies to your own channel because that's our mission here at Think Media is to help a million purpose-driven people create a full-time living doing what they love while making a difference in the world with YouTube. And so thinking about how you can apply this kind of stuff um, and then as we get ready after this next coaching session, throw four question marks before and after uh, questions, and we'll do a little bit of Q&A on the Coffee with Cannell show today. All right. I am so fired up for our next channel. We have uh, Bree and D from Dirt Magicians. How's it going? Hey, good, Sean. I just wanted to show you my water bottle because I know you're all about hydration and it's full day. I think it's like four liters and it like tells you throughout the day where you should go, like keep going just a little bit further. So Brie, you know what's so funny about that is no joke. Um, I don't have that water bottle. I just ordered it. What are the <laughs> chances that I ordered the exact same colorway? I don't know if you actually have the the uh the blue like you could see, it's like the blue gradient one because that's yeah. literally the one i ordered yeah it's like i <laughs> ordered that exact same one and oh it was it was already delivered it is on my porch so i can finally get hydrated i heard uh, tom brady just spoke in um in miami 
at the vault conference with Patrick Bet David, and he drinks two gallons of water a day. Whoa. I probably drink a quarter gallon of water a day and two gallons of coffee a day. So that's why I'm dying. And so I've made a new, that's why I had to get the commitment because I want to up my uh, hydration game. So that's super funny. Literally the exact same colorway <laughs> of your bottle is sitting on my deck and uh, my porch. Uh, but man, it's so good to um, meet y'all and get to hang out like this. Do you want to each uh, kind of break down a little bit of the story and what you're building? And I'll pull the channel up as well. Yeah, sure. I can, I can, I can start. Uh, hey, Sean, I'm Dee. You know Bree is a true fan when you and her are uh, aligned in frequency. <laughs> I feel it. I'm excited. Yes. Uh, okay. All right. With Dirt Magicians, let me give you a brief background. So essentially what we've been doing offline is that we are trying to create communities of people that are growing food because we ran a couple of pilots out here in Vancouver where we both live. And we've realized that gardeners learn best from each other, not necessarily from influencers. And we learned this by running pilots with people in communities. So what we've started to do on this channel is that we've decided that, well, we need to build an audience because if we want our test, we want to test some of these ideas that we've done offline. We'll, we'll need an audience that we can basically share these ideas with and essentially test ideas with. So when we established our YouTube channel, we were doing very general gardening education. This channel's really been live for about a year and a half. And I think we've been doing regular publishing really just for the past year. Um, and then this year, we realized we can't just do general vegetable gardening education because this is a very, very, very crowded niche. So we said, okay, how do we, how do we really niche down and how do we focus so we essentially started to target beginners, most specifically. And I'll let Bree take it over from here because I wanted to give you a, an overview of what it is that we're doing. And then speci specifically with the channel, she's been taking the lead. So I'll like, let her kind of go into the channel blueprint and how and what we've been doing to set ourselves apart. Yeah. So Sean, thanks so much for, for having us on here. I feel like I've been getting to a place with our channel where I'm beating my head against the wall and I'm not sure why. Um, so we do vegetable gardening education um, and the way that we've tried to kind of distinguish ourselves from other groups and also to kind of bring this message around community and growing food is in a lot of the videos, um, Dee is my beginner and I'm teaching her. So we kind of have back and forth um, and she asks questions. Um, and then we've had one video that we honestly like threw together last year, right when we were starting, um, that went viral for us. We had like a hundred thousand views and it was just eight DIY trellis ideas from other gardeners. So we've been trying to replicate that, um, and just going into, because we did these pilots, we have a bunch of gardeners who will let us kind of creep into their backyards and, um, you know, show what they're doing. So we've got a few videos on that. And then again, because we're doing this offline garden education, um, we've taken real questions from gardeners in those education sessions that various gardeners have done. And then we just make a YouTube video um, about that. And, you know, I've been going through VRA. I do, you know, uh, YouTube autofill, vidIQ. We look at competitors. We look at top videos for topic research. I have a bunch of questions that I answer before I even start scripting. But I think one of our big challenges is just getting people to stick through the video. Um, we still seem to have, even though we felt like we've shortened intros. And I think part of it is, you know, when you're so into what you're doing, like I watch a video that's been fully edited and I'm like, oh, this looks great. People are going to love this. And then we still end up with like 25 to 40% retention. So we're just not sure how to increase retention on our videos. Great. And then before we dive into that and we can look at a video, what did you learn? Why do you think this video did so well? Um, well, we, we initially thought a trellising usually does really well in gardening videos. We've learned from just like looking at other competitors. Um, and then the other piece was, uh, we thought sort of showing what you can do in other gardens and kind of like getting to peek into other people's yards. Um, but that hasn't translated as much yet this year. But then on the other hand, this video didn't do well in the first week or two. And then the algorithm picked it up probably like a month or two later. What did you try to do other list listicles? Um, yeah, so we've done like four ways to grow potatoes, five ways to trellis cucumbers, four ways to start a vegetable garden. Because what I also wonder, but I'm also thinking like, um, 
the insights from this for me is that it's like a specific pain point desire that gardeners want and then it educates on multiple ways to do it so i don't know anything but an idea for me would be like raised beds what if it was like you know six different styles of raised beds and then play that out this is a common thing that a lot of you channels find too like a lot of channels will find almost like a template, but I don't think it's four easy ways to start a garden. I think it's, I think what you found here, like one of the things we found would be clusters of tech and uh, tech channels figured out that accessories under $50 because it's like a format where people like, okay, I know I've, I would love to up my tech game, my content creation game under $50. So if it was trellises or certain thing, and maybe you don't do vertical gardening, but if it's vertical and ways to do it is speaks to, um, you know, or DIY, I, DIY too, because that would sort of mean, right, like not pre-packaged, but like somebody could follow along. And then by the end of the video, they have a huge payoff mm -hmm. because they're like, oh, that would work in my space based in my amount of, any thoughts on that? Does that seem like a cool way to maybe double down and try success leaves clues, make part twos? Yeah, we did try to do some DIY building trellis ones. Although I know for one of them, I think, uh, we're still learning how to use a camera this year. We were all iPhone last year. Uh, so the visual wasn't great. And then I think also we had a really long intro, so it didn't do, um, as well. But yeah, I think definitely the DIY follow. -along. What do you think about like raised garden beds? Like these ideas, have you like hit these? Just curious, just asking questions. Yeah. So we've done, yeah, I think we did more specifically garden designs, not raised bed gardens. Um, Cool. So, so, I mean, that's an idea like back to you're using all the tools. It's great. You're, you know, you're using vidIQ, IQ, you're using all the stuff, but back to like topic being the first ingredient, the big idea of the perfect video recipe is like the topic itself. Um, sometimes having a breakout topic could be taking something, whether it's right, you know, and whatever other things that there are like that certain, of course, there's trends that happen, um, as well. And, and trends would be maybe seasonal, I guess you said. Uh, yeah, okay. You know, I don't know. What else is there besides trellises and raised guard beds and greenhouses? And and like just the, maybe these things, like this desire that a lot of America, maybe to somebody in their backyard in Canada would want to, and international. Um, okay, and then let's dive into uh, a video and see what we could we'll learn here. We're going to help you create a drop. These eight oh, tips actually, are going to help this one is a different person. We, we've had a few guest um, video people come in. Can I do this one, the cucumber? Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. that's a good one. Hey, Dirt Magicians, trellising cucumbers is a great way to increase the vertical growing space in your garden, which leaves you more space to grow not only more cucumbers, but also other vegetables. Now, there are two factors we need to meet when we're coming up with some kind of... So this is a personal um, preference and just... Uh, one one of my in a way pet peeves i talked to our team about this when we're doing time codes and chapters i hate the word intro like the word intro to me is irrelevant here's why i also think that what does it say on netflix when you're watching a show there's actually a hook then there's the intro and it says skip intro and besides the 1% of people watching this that play that thing, I mean, maybe you watch it the first time because you're like, let me get a vibe for like the show intro with the music and the credits. What do people click? Skip intro, skip intro, skip the credits, move to the next thing. So even just the psychology of an intro. Now, what we would say is we just name it something different. We might say, I might name it two factors because now I want to create desire, like two factors you need to know because I need to watch that part. Otherwise, I could just skip to here and actually get into what you've potentially promised. Now, if you're also gonna say five DIY trellis ideas, well, I just wanna skip to the first trellis idea. So you like, how quickly can you get to it? So anyways, just personal pet peeve, it's a small thing. There's obviously the video architecture itself, but titling a chapter intro, in my personal opinion, is kind of pointless. Of a support or a trellis for cucumbers. One is that there is something small like wire or string that the cucumbers can grab onto as they have these little tendrils. And two, it needs to be strong enough to be able to support multiple fruits per cucumber plant. So if you can meet those conditions, there are so many different ways to trellis cucumbers. So in this video, we are going to show you 
five different ways that you can trellis cucumbers here in Groville. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't, I wouldn't think your, your view duration is not probably uncommon. Um, for this kind of information, people, whether they want to stick with it or not, you know, whether that I, what I would go in, are you studying your audience retention curve? Uh, for the first, yes. Because are, are you seeing spikes like little blips at the chapters? Uh, yeah, sometimes. Because that's also just, it's sort of the, that, that kind of helps you see inside of the viewer experience. Like they actually don't like, I love chapters. Some people argue don't use them, but one person could click on this video and be like, okay, there's a tomato cage trellis. Well, I already know about that. Garden six trellis. I'm not going to use that one. Okay. I do want to watch the triangle trellis. They watch it for a little while and they're like, okay, I got the idea. My neighbor does that string trellis. I would never do that. And DIY archway. Okay. Let me watch that one. Like just the idea, like they, it, you are kind of, which I think it's valuable. I just want to give the viewer value so they could skip yeah. around. Um, but that's something to kind of study to see where people are being led around. The only other thought up here is, trying to like raise the stakes and articulate and give people a personal, uh, a reason to watch until the end. Now I can see your vibe, very centered, clear, articulating well, no weird energy, YouTube energy. That's all a hundred miles per hour, Mr. B style. You're not yelling at anybody. <laughs> I see all that. Like, however, I think that in your style, um, the, the problem we want to solve is gaining the viewers, the viewers attention and giving them a reason to watch until the end. Like as much as possible, if we can articulate or preview and back to our last conversation, if someone's watching this full coffee with Cano episode on replay, if you think about everything being a progressive, like what I do know for sure is you're going to teach me, or at least I hope you're going to teach me five DIY cucumber trellis ideas from other gardeners. Okay. Um, it also probably, I will come back to that. I don't think it even needs to say other gardeners because who cares where they're from? I just want the ideas and less is more. Um, and if we though, if you grip me on the, the thumbnail, you grip me with the idea, but now once I'm inside, what's the point of an email subject line, get people to open the email. What's the point of a Yelp listing for a restaurant? Get someone to actually show up to the restaurant. Once they're in the restaurant, we use this in the perfect video recipe in YouTube secrets when I explain it, is also like each piece is meant to just get you in the door, but then the food has got to be good. And once the food is good, you also hope the service is good. But the ultimate goal is not just to get someone in the door eating at the restaurant. The ultimate goal is word of mouth, get someone to coming back uh, and, and tell their friends and leave a review and actually have a repeat customer, repeat business, which would be the conversion of a subscriber, but not just a subscriber. It would be somebody who actually had an experience with dirt magicians and is like, I love their videos. I can't miss their videos. Tall order. Like, but that's the dream. The dream would be someone clicks on one of your videos, discovers you, follows you, loves you and watches every second of your content till the end of time. That would be perfection of what we're trying to accomplish on YouTube. So saying that, all you're trying to do is get them into the video, but then it's like, how could we give them some other bonuses? They know they're going to get these cucumber trellises, but th the things that are top of mind are also some of the mistakes that people make. And I'm, I'm going to be sharing with you a story of one person who was able to double their harvest, like double their crop because they made this tweak to one of their trellises. Um, and also, and you maybe not, you don't do all of this, but these are like the different frameworks you could use. I'm also going to be sharing like a, a mistake that when, if you actually set this up wrong, um, it ends up sucking the life out of your plants. And, and so I'm in it, I'm already there. You're not trying to be really long winded and like make up all this stuff of reason to watch, but you want to try to architect your content in such a way that you're re-engaging the viewer so that there's a reason to watch to the end or a reason to watch through the different segments. Any feedback on that? So I have a question, Sean. So if you were to set that up and say, okay, you know, at some point, maybe in the very beginning, you say, I'll give you the five DIY trellis ideas, but I'll also tell you one way you could build these trellises that's going to screw up your produce or something like that. Yep. Where do you embed something like that to re-engage them? Because obviously they're skipping around based on the chapters because they want to get to that trellis, but then you don't want to embed that as a chapter, do you? Because you want to bury it somewhere. 
so people are looking for it like how like how do you use that tactic? yeah you that that's that's up to you and those mistake you might not say when the mistake is the mistake could be taught during anything and maybe it's not an entire it, it's just you get this one you get this one but mid midway through here is that this is also why in video ranking academy the seven r's are in the order that they're in because if you have reverse engineered the thumbnail, the title, all this different stuff. You've done your research. You've done your, um, and then also in research would be pre-record is outlining the video. Before we record, we think about okay, big idea. You know, trellis one, trellis two, trellis three. How can we spice this up? One of the big mistakes people make on trellis three, or it could be in a chance for say affiliate marketing or something. You know that uh, when it comes to that third trellis. There's that new irrigation thing that's two bucks on Amazon. Like if you get that, like, so it also, it's not just a mistake or something that'll hurt. It's something that will power up your thing. This brand new type of rope that is better, that's biodegradable, like just thinking about enhancements. So if we pre-plan, if we fail to plan, we plan to fail, but prior planning prevents poor performance. And by looking at our outline, how could we spice this up? What's a mistake? What's a bonus? What's something else we can include? And then you can include it anywhere. Another thought on these time codes and chapters too, I think for search-based, I like that you're saying what it is, uh, but there's another strategy in, in time codes and chapters. And the reason I say for search-based is theoretically, somebody that's looking up triangle trellis, this could rank kind of on Google. Theoretic, like There's like key moments. So that could actually show up on Google. Alternatively though, for mystery, we'll sometimes say, trellis one, trellis two, trellis three, trellis four, trellis five, which is another way to think about like it's organization so people can skip around, but they at least need to. And, and someone might say, well, that's less value to the, sure. But you also made this incredible free content and they at least can get the big idea of each one. And, 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 and it's going to actually probably increase if they're sold on the concept, it would increase average view duration because they'll give each one 10 or 20 seconds. And maybe the one they're interested in, they'll watch the whole segment. Just another thing, and these are things we're always testing and and uh, and playing with. But any feedback on that? Yeah, no, that's really helpful. And it, it actually, um, I'm outlining a video right now, and it just gave me a great idea of how to to hook somebody with a uh, wait until we share, um, you know, something that will fail if you do this kind of thing. So I think uh, the other thing that can like let's power up the hook more. The other thing to power up the hook is to tr is to try. Like what I would love to see is to show all five in B-roll. So as you're saying it, you show a panning shot of one, a panning shot of other. Now, the way this looks to me is a little tough because with the nature of the leafy plants and maybe kind of how busy it looks. And even if it didn't, like, but like this. So like if you showed me that and if it, if it said even trellis number one over top, or if it if it had some mystery to it, um, what the goal, and this is what any reality TV show does, or and it's what top YouTubers do as well, they actually kind of tease the juiciest shots coming later in the video. The subject matter isn't the juiciest subject matter, like, oh my gosh, like look at this trellis. But like, nevertheless, um, it it still is reinforcing the art what you're articulating too so so if it's also like here's you're gonna get these practical five things you're also gonna get this really cool thing and what they'll sometimes do is blur it out it's it's good like they'll blur it out like this cool i'm also gonna be revealing like this really cool trick that we found that like doubled um and two um uh garden tools that that uh, we have absolutely been loving and that's you don't have to force any of this stuff into the video, but any, any, these are all enha enhancements that could lead to best practice of improving it. And then, you know, the final thing I would say would be back to just big idea. Like let's zoom out and say, okay, um, I don't love the thumbnail. You're kind of small here. Yes. You've sort of grayed out. You know, one thing that I would potentially do, and this is because of the nature of, of a busy garden, leafy things, is I, I wonder if I'd get like a cloth and, and you could potentially, and or a good DSLR mirrorless camera, 
to try to get like isolated shots of things. Um, so let me think about, let's see if we just go trellis ideas and we'll see like what's ranked and see what we can see how that's pretty, that's it's clear. Cause the most top ranked video is not a great thumbnail, but it's incredibly clear. Um, this is pretty amazing. And, and what I guess that's what I mean by the cloth is the, the greenhouse there puts simplicity behind what it is. It makes it a little sharper. This is also clear because of the dark trees. This is clear because of the zoom in. Um, and so hey, dirt magician. you have your work cut out for you, but I guess, and forgive me, this is just my feedback, but that's great. <laughs> but, but this doesn't even look like a trellis to me. Like, I don't know, even know what I'm looking at. So the thumbnail is kind of confusing. Ultimately it's sort of like, okay, there's, a, I sort of see, okay. So I see that trellis. You also say so many cucumber ideas. I don't see any cucumbers. I mean, kind of one, but it's in the shadow lighting time of day. It's tough. So you like harsh sunlight. Sun is right above. This is dark. These leaves are bright. Sh harsh shadows, light dynamics. You're tiny over here. There's the cutout. What are we looking at? What's the cucumber idea? This is pointing to the flowers. The cucumbers down. I could barely see. And I'm never going to look at it as large as we're looking at it. It's on a smartphone. And and I guess, okay, so it's cucumber trellis ideas. That makes sense. So it's so many cucumber ideas. But what even is a cucumber idea? Is it actually the desire of the viewer is, is, is trellis ideas? And if it was um, unique, two words, like unique trellis or like, uh, and I don't love that, but it's, you know, something different. Like you got to see this, um, try this. Like sometimes those are my favorite words. It just says, try this. And it points to something that looks interesting and that's somewhat clear. So I think that, and then try this is just try what? Eye catching thumbnail. Now I read the title, and then five DIY cucumber trellis ideas. There's something super powerful about really short, incredibly clear titles. So the whole from other gardeners is unnecessary in my opinion. I think what's interesting is it could be five DIY cucumber trellis ideas, and there's a lot of other ways you could power that up as well. It could be like five DIY cucumber trellis ideas fill that either... Uh, it's usually more benefit or like removal of pain. Um, DIY, you know, that you could build for free, for free, under a hundred dollars. And I know this might not be relevant here, but just in general, you know, um, that are easy to set up, but I don't even think it actually needs anything. I don't understand if it was also, if, if there was a genuine benefit of other gardeners, then maybe the thumbnail is three distinct kind of like decent photos of, you know, diverse looking gardeners because that's the value proposition. And like, oh, cool. I want, I want to actually hear different people's perspective. But to me, other gardeners, the promise is just the ideas. What am I here for? Just cucumber trellis ideas. And I'm, you know, wanting to find that any uh, feedback or things you want to process that we've been talking about. No, that's that's really helpful. Um, and honestly, the from other gardeners we pulled just because that was on our previous trellis video. So we're like, well, it worked here, so we'll try it here. But uh, no, I think just even hearing your thought process around, you know, what's the value, what are the key pieces that people care for, um, yeah, was really helpful. And then success leaves clues. So, so um, okay, naturally, this channel has got more subs, so that's an advantage. However, it's always a huge signal when someone has more views than they do subscribers on a video. The video is a year old. It's done very, very well. And this, I think, is a picture of some of the things I would hope to achieve. Yeah. One, um, still, he's kind of a little small and dimly lit, but the thumbnail is pretty great. What's the desire? A cucumber trellis. That's exactly what I want. Like, that's what I'm on YouTube for. So that's clear. It's mm -hmm. zoomed in. The cucumbers interesting like if this is good psychology conversation i love this stuff does we think about what like features and benefits what is that that people ultimately desire do people ultimately desire a trellis or do they desire a delicious cucumber yeah 
you know, what does people ultimately desire? Like power windows or being cool in the car? And so even the trellis is a means to an end of we also think about viewer behavior. So even even the payoff, those cucumbers look amazing. He's also <laughs> he's also taking the photo in overcast uh, lighting, right. making it much more easy for cameras to expose properly. The greens are rich and we could take this thumbnail and make it a lot better. If he was lit better, you could see the whites of his eyes and even maybe a little bit more vibrancy, um, saturation because I, yes, I'm looking for the practical tool to get me to my desired destination, which is delicious, giant cucumbers. Great. And then look at how great the title is. So use this cucumber trellis for a huge harvest features and benefits in the title. And so, um, you think about you, you know, five DIY trellis ideas for doubling your harvest for a huge harvest. Now that could be clickbait. So you want to be honest. Um, but that is one of those things. If we look at just the concept itself, and if you're brainstorming ideas to your point, us processing together is why we want to do, um, you know, coaching sessions like this on coffee with Cannell is before we press record, I would want to have this conversation, even if it's just with myself, I'm looking at other videos, I'm opening up vidIQ, I'm opening up. Um, and I'm, I'm reminding myself to go through the seven R's and I want to work the system because once we get clear on some of these ideas, even how we hook the video, what we say in the hook is influenced and it's going to influence everything down the, the chain. Um, and thus it can lead us to an opportunity like this would be a viral for VFM. If, if y'all got another hundred K another 200 K and all of that's in your future, you're going to be, you know, crushing it as you continue to do that. Another thing I noticed here is again, overcast lighting, that trellis looks super cool. It's very distinct to see what it is. You know, um, it's interesting. It's kind of a nice shot. It's got a nice smile happen. The angle of the shot happens to be on darker trees behind allowing the white fish line or thread or whatever to kind of show up. This one is super good because of the kind of symmetry and the wide angle shot. So I hope that some of these thoughts, that one's super good. It, it is green on green on green on green. So I almost wonder like, what if you dropped a, a white piece of plastic behind that? And that goes into the idea of just this fact. You're like, this is ridiculous. You're like saying we should take 20 minutes if so. And like someone stands on a ladder and holds up a, a couple different, you know, sheets we bring from home in order and then take different thumbnail photography. Yeah, I, I am actually, because like taking that much more time, this one is good too. You got the depth of field, meaning the blurriness, the white on him kind of pops him a little bit more, but it, it's very clear and sturdy and cheap being different language pointing to a desire of that particular, uh, trellis that we could um, ultimately uh, apply there as well. So I think a lot of that's some super tactical stuff for some of your future videos. Hit me with any final questions or uh, feedback on, on some of those tips. Uh, I mean, for me, that was really helpful. Uh, and I totally hear you on the sheet. There are the number of times that we shoot stuff and we're like, this is ridiculous. Like, I'll be behind her with a light like this. And <laughs> so uh, adding a sheet into the mix is it will not be new for us. That's a great idea, actually, because we do sometimes struggle. We're like, oh, you can't really see what we're trying to, to show here. So um, yeah, that was really helpful. Thank you so much for kind of going through that. And it's, it's really helpful to just have outside eyes because sometimes you just get so into the thick of it. And D, I'll come to you in just a second, but I also um, want to encourage that sometimes, and you're already doing that. I can see you're probably pulling stock photos maybe of these strawberries and whatnot. I, I want everybody listening to this to when you're conceptualizing a thumbnail, I think ethically it is okay to stage something that isn't the exact thing so long as it's still honest. So in some cases, isolating what it is, using stock photos or whatever, we're just trying to tell the best story that's honest, that communicates what it is we're trying to show. And that's in some environments. So we struggle with this with, for example, with desk setups, because the nature of like a full on desk setup is not necessarily conducive to a thumbnail because zoomed out two monitors, all these cables and whatever else. It's like, how do you show that? 
So it's the big question content creators want to ask is like, what are the ways to show it? One time we did an entire audio video lighting setup for like a church. And the thumbnail ended up being three panels of a very isolated microphone of an isolated camera. But I because to zoom out and show like the whole room and all the chairs and the weird lighting and so on, it just it just is not conducive. So it's kind of asking ourselves, OK, I really love yours. And it's a big viewed video. I love your don't do this, do this. That that kind of concept is is so great. The title could probably be a little bit better, like organic fertilizers, how to fertilize your garden without chemicals. Like the, this organic fertilizer will kill your garden. Dot, dot, dot. That's so then like, okay. And, and, be, and, and we're, we, we hold intention in VRA search-based practical. That's just like a great title search-based the way you wrote it. But the way your thumbnail was uh, gives it the opportunity to kind of be like a little viral video within your community of everyone being like, wait a minute, I don't want to kill my garden. So it's the other angle. So it's the t we do both. We do search based, real practical titles. And then we do that like, you know, this cucumber trellis will give you a huge harvest. What cucumber trellis? The nice thing about that is it's both. It's VRA. Cucumber trellis could be a search based thing that may rank that video but it also has mystery around it as opposed to like the entire child title revealing the video. Okay. D any final questions, any thoughts? No, I think it was really good. Cause I think this year we finally invested in a camera and we started finding the right times to shoot. So things weren't blown out. Cause even the overhead sun, cause we realized, you know, if we shoot just between this time and this time, everything's getting blown out. So I think having the discipline to even shoot the thumbnail, cause you know, one of the things we've tr tried to do is let's not make the thumbnail the afterthought, but the thumbnail during the shoot is always still the afterthought and it's showing. Uh, so I think even as you were critiquing it, I was thinking, okay, we really got to make this a priority. We got to shoot it at a time when it's not, we know for a fact it's not going to get blown out. And then thinking of all the other elements because the green on green, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. It's just too crowded. It's too busy. So that was really valuable, Sean. Thanks. And I've got one piece of tech for you to add. It's very cheap to add to your repertoire. We'll link this up in the description, of course. Mm -hmm. But in your specific situation, do you have one of these? Uh, a three, a five in one reflector dish? No. Okay. So if I'm you, I want the largest reflector dish because you're at the you're in these outdoor situations but watch this this is going to be like the coolest asset so 24 inches 43 inches um okay so 42 i liked on bnh photo this one we found is 40 so 42 is great let's see was there a 42 here and then i'll explain what we're looking at so what's going to be amazing with this reflector dish is number one, you can go white. So it'll just kind of be subtle and it can split. So you could, you, you could redirect the sun to overcompensate from shadows and like make a plant glow. Like, so now, and you could, you could shine it with the silver reflection or the gold, uh, black to block light from one side or whatever. And perhaps throw this even, you could also put this behind the object. So just a little tool, kind of like a sheet, 42 inches is pretty big, but the other uh, option is see how one is is clear is you you put it up in the air. The sun is direct and it'll shadow the object down below and maybe the fence is behind it. So even just have you can buy one or two of these twenty three dollars. So you like and they fold up, although that's impossible. That's like the joke is like how hard you're like trying to get it back into its case. You can never get into its case again. <laughs> uh, but but no, this this is this would be super for being an outdoor photography situation. You could shine the light on it, uh, you know put something behind it. And then ultimately in film sets, they'll use these C stands and have giant um, scrim or sheets or filters that they'll put above two people talking. And it could be 20 feet by 20 feet and they'll stretch it above to be able to basically create an overcast situation. Mm -hmm. And so the cool thing here is you could put a diffused lighting um, if you struggle with lighting, uh, ultimately uh, above your yes, yeah, so it goes down. Nice little small case there, and 
this one's probably great, but what I, I, I have one at our Vegas office. I don't know how big 42 inches that's giant. It's like unreasonably large, but perfect for your situation. If you had like a bed of, of, you know, plants you wanted to end up and then, and then snap, 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 and take it back. And once you're looking at all the photos, you're like, that one looks really good. And that would be a huge asset that only costs a few dollars. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Thank appreciate y'all so much. Thank you for being a part of uh, Coffee with Kennel today. Yeah, thank, thanks, Sean. Thanks, thanks for being a great guy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Appreciate y'all. Take care. Okay, Coffee with Kennel. Listen, we're about to do some Q&A. Uh, it looks like JP just dropped a link to um, one of these uh, uh, variable filters. That could be something cool that you might want to check out. Um, if you haven't smashed the like button, smash the like button. And if you haven't um, dropped any aha moments, drop an aha moment. We're talking about titles, thumbnails, topics, research, hooks, and uh, watch the replay of this episode. We get really granular and tactical on Coffee with Cannell out here today. Um, let me know what you're drinking. I'm sipping on some Ethiopian Yurga Chef, uh, single origin, and uh, it's delicious. And um, I'm going to jump into your questions here in just a second. Uh, but I do want to encourage you when it comes to some of these um, titles, video ideas, thumbnail templates, if you're interested in all that kind of stuff and you've never picked up our YouTube starter kit, uh, it'll help you go really fast and uh, it's super affordable. Check this out. This video is brought to you by YouTubestarterkit.com. Download your power-packed digital asset bundle today to dramatically shortcut the path to creating or reviving your YouTube channel. Inside, you'll get access to our AI for YouTube guide, video checklists, title formulas, thumbnail templates, and our 51 money-making ideas download, and so much more. To download these resources and to start growing your YouTube channel faster, just go to tubestarterkit.com. Welcome back to Coffee with Cannell, tubestarterkit.com. This is one of the coolest things we've ever created here at Think Media. Um, there's so many valuable resources. And this product has gone on um, different sales over the years. I think, yeah, right now it's just $47, tubestarterkit.com. Um, and you've got, it actually was completely rebuilt recently. And so uh, the Think Media team and I are uh, getting our clarity blueprints. You get super clear. Uh, 51 money-making video ideas, create awesome thumbnails, uh, a lot of really cool stuff in there um, to uh, check out. And the fact we're including our AI guide is crazy. I didn't even know that. So that was a, a really great resource that we've been working on lately. And so anyways, check that out. That is uh, tubestarterkit.com. And let me jump into some of your questions and i wanted to see if you have any aha moments we got we got water in the house smart tea in the house uh jp's asking are those resources already in vra starter kit is separate to vra and so i don't believe the thumbnail templates are in there i don't believe the uh, title formulas are in there now in vra you learn how to develop titles at a mastery level but this set of checklists um, is, uh, is different than what's inside of VRA. There is a little bit of overlap. Like you do have the 51 money-making video ideas, but we have this thing priced at such a level that, um, it is a great resource every once in a while. And, and you'll probably notice if you hang out with us that when we have web classes and stuff, we do special offers and our bonuses, like at the end of a class, I'll talk about VRA and there's like other bonuses those do change. So they, those change. Sometimes you get the starter kit, sometimes you don't. And we are always just wanting to be honest and clear with our deadlines and all of that stuff. And so every once in a while, you do have a chance to get it when you join VRA. So you can always check your members area to see there, uh, to see if it's there. Um, but JP, I'm not sure when you join too. The cool thing lately is that people are still getting lifetime access that's going away pretty soon to our Video Reiki Academy program. So some people joined a year and a half ago and AI guy didn't exist yet and different things didn't exist. And so you can always purchase those things separately. Um, but if you don't have the starter kit in your members area, 
$47, that's like skipping one eating out and then making a video that's going to pay you for the next six years and eat out as much as you want. So I think that uh, some definitely uh, a valuable resource you could check out. Drinking some good old H2O. We got Jamaican soda. I've never had that. That sounds uh, delicious. And uh, let's dive into some Q&A for the Coffee with Candle show today. Let me also look at my calendar and look if I'm about to make Kyle mad or somebody. I don't know who's who's mad at me. I have plenty of time. I'm still within my allotted Coffee with Candle window. And so we have some chance for some Q&A today. How do I help my longer videos get more views compared to my shorts? I would encourage you to rewatch this training. If you've been here the whole time, we shared those tactics. Better hook. Try not to over explain. You know, one thing that's powerful is if you do outline your video and if you script your video, like I don't really script my videos, uh, but I would say try to speak at a fifth grade reading level. When you become an expert on something, um, what happens is you lose touch with someone that's just getting started and you might speak at a pace and speak at language that's hard to follow and how hard to kind of retain the viewer. So there's a lot of best practices understanding who the video is made for. So let's look at it from this perspective. What could cause somebody to jump off of a video? Over explaining, this is getting boring, I wanna leave. Being hard to understand. I'm, I'm having trouble following this person. Like, I just, I don't get it. I don't know, I'm gonna go look for somebody that can exp explain it clearer, simpler. Boring, maybe the energy is low and it's too monotonous. Um, so maybe injecting in just some pattern resets, um, something that makes the video a little bit more interesting being too in like funny or making jokes. We talked about that earlier, like putting in uh, lots of humor and lots of like, bro, get to the point, like keep sharing the main content. Like I get, there's all these like side jokes, but I'm just trying to get the information. So I'm not trying to overwhelm you or anybody, but it's a delicate dance. We're just trying to think about your video having a pace, a pace of editing, a pace of the information, a pace of, and, and maybe one of the most powerful communication tools though I could say is when I also think about pace is, you know, a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. What, when did Sean become Mary Poppins? Like, if you're, this would be for education channels. If you are teaching something that's like, bro, give me a break. And there's, it's like, it's hard to learn. You know, I'm teaching, I've been doing video for 20 years and YouTube for 16. It's really easy for me to overwhelm people. You're like, I know I'm already overwhelmed. So it's really easy. So if, if I try to maybe slow down, tell a story, facts tell, but stories sell. So you make a point, but illustrate it with a story. Oh, now it's making sense. This would be, all be like the art of communication. And so a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. It's like, okay, the medicine is like, they're coming here to learn something, to discover something, but it's so boring. Like this is medicine, yuck. Well, a spoonful of sugar. Sugar could just be a, a story, a joke, entertainment of some kind, a pattern reset, change of scenery, something that's sweet that improves the thing that I want to ultimately, the result I want to get. If anything, we could call this edutainment too, that education is good and entertainment is good, but the best things educational channels can do is think about how can I make this content a little bit more entertaining and that's always good to hold viewer retention. How can you tell when the season is passed for seasonal content? DHN Crypto, what a great question. So let's talk about tent poles. And the cool thing about this is the tool is going to be Google Trends. So DHN Crypto asks, how can you tell when a season is passed for seasonal content? Well, my tip for you is, first of all, let's go to Google Trends and let's look up Thanksgiving. So we're going to go Thanksgiving on Google Trends as a search term. Now, if you were a DIY channel, home decor, um, food channel, cooking channel, or anything else that might relate to Thanksgiving content, this would be kind of relevant for you. And you could do this with anything that you're using. So what we're going to, any, any niche, and you could change the topic out. We're going to switch from web search to YouTube search. 
And we're going to go to the past 12 months. And what we're going to do here is see that interest in Thanksgiving is at an all time low right now, which makes sense as of mid September here, beginning of September. So let's look back to last year. And this right here is how is what can influence your content creation schedule. Meaning this, as you're planning ahead and you start thinking, okay, uh, I'm, I'm going to operate here as a, again, home decor or cooking, uh, turkey recipe, Thanksgiving turkey recipe, vegan recipe. You're just tapping into some trends. Uh, paleo friendly uh, Thanksgiving meal prep, you know, whatever. Uh, Thanksgiving table decor, et cetera. So you ask your the question is, when should I release the video? Like, cause timing matters when, and, and the reason these are called tent poles, tent pole events or the Super Bowl Thanksgiving is because it's, it's look, it's like a tent. You could live inside of there. Like it comes up, it comes down. And so there are these peaks where it would be really foolish to release a Thanksgiving video in April. It would be really smart to release it at a strategic time. Tent poles could be Comic Con, tent poles could be Christmas, tent poles could be the Super Bowl. Temples could be niche events that happen annually in subcultures. So let's let's look. The you could release the video as early as October 30th. And you'll notice that that's it's still on the rise and there is more interest. And the cool thing about YouTube is you may get the benefit of this entire climb of traffic right here. Um, I would say that based on this, November 6th is where it starts to peak. If I was going to make something about Thanksgiving, November 6th would be the time to do it. That happens to be my birthday. I turned 40 um, this year. And so then I'm going to get the whole benefit of that peak. Now, here's what's also interesting is you also get the, you get quite a bit of traffic all the way until, or you get interest all the way until December 3rd. So it goes past the event. We found that to be true. It always shocks me. I do Black Friday videos every single day, every single day, every single year for the past my whole life the past five ten years and it's black the black friday peak is like black friday itself between november 20th and the 26th usually the day after thanksgiving which i think is november 25th but notice that there's still traffic that comes that goes all the way until december 10th and i've noticed that to be true i'm like it's over but it's maybe because i make a list of the best deals and people are just curious I don't I don't know. I'm speculating. I, I, all I know is the videos keep getting views for like a couple more weeks. So your, you know, worst case scenario, you're like, oh, shoot, I missed it. But you could still release the video. It'd be kind of weird to do a Black Friday video after Black Friday, but you could still have some benefit if you went the 27th or something. Um, it would be obviously too late once you find yourself here in early December or at any other time of the year. And you'll also notice why some channels may, if there is any pre-information on articles or something, we'll do like Black Friday stuff a little bit earlier. So the tool is called Google Trends. It's full, it's free to use. Um, you could switch it to YouTube search. You could also, it's also incredibly powerful for maybe comparing two different things. You should, uh, you know, am I going to do a Black Friday video or Thanksgiving video? which is gonna get more search. Well, Thanksgiving is way bigger than Black Friday in and of itself. However, like, what does that mean? Why are people searching? Maybe you were thinking, am I going to create a Call of Duty gaming series next or a uh, Last of Us uh, gaming series? Oh, this will be this will be messed up because people are looking at the HBO show. But nevertheless, look at some of this stuff, right? You, you can now compare different things and compare last of us this probably was peaking during the show i'm guessing and now it's kind of died off and call of duty is more popular and so maybe you want to have a more niche series maybe you want to tap into a thing that's more popular obviously i understand that you could do vanguard and a million other distinctions but understanding how to use google trends is one of the most powerful tools to have in your tool belt that is one thing that we just one of the many tools we talk about, like in our video ranking Academy program, when you can understand all the tools and blend them together. Cause I've learned that no one tool really reveals all the information, but the most dangerous content creator is the content creator. That's like, let's check out Google trends. Let's check out vidIQ. Let's do some keyword research. 
let's let's talk to let me shoot an email to my community let me let me talk to somebody or i've had feedback i've been reading my comments mm, there's the idea that's the positioning of the idea based on the combination of multiple tools and um and it's too late when you're on the other side of the tent pole and too many people i think miss the rise because you want all the benefit of the rise of the trend man who likes that tip cardboard guide says great tips on google trends i love it um uh corky how can i get info on the elite group we did just launch a new thing called vra elite that means you get hooked up with a think media certified coach um and we kind of walk with you it's kind of like having a personal trainer like we could give you access to the course where you could do it yourself at your own pace going through the content at your own pace that's called vra vra elite is like okay let me we don't just have the course material that you can take on your phone, the laptop, our course video ranking academy, but I want to get a certified coach to give me feedback and accountability, personal trainer. Are you doing your workouts? I've been going through the material. Do you understand it? Why am I looking at your thumbnails and you're not doing what Sean said? Yeah, it's super powerful. And so um, it should be in your uh, quirky email it's also in the vra facebook group if you haven't been in there and if you're getting emails from vra and i think uh drea can drop you a link as well um to we don't have like a really good page built out for it but it is on special discount right now um and that is uh it's like 50 percent off of what it's going to be as we're launching kind of the genesis of vra elite we're so excited there's already like 30 people that signed up Okay, um, I got a couple more questions coming your way here in just a second, but I want to remind you, every single Tuesday and Thursday, something special happens right here on YouTube on the Think Media Podcast channel, but also on Spotify and Apple. Check this out. Did you know that we have a weekly show called the Think Media Podcast? If you want to learn the best strategies for growing your business and brand with YouTube, for how to thrive as a creator, or how to get more leads and clients and customers as an entrepreneur, then I want to invite you to subscribe to the Think Media Podcast. Available on YouTube and all of the audio platforms, on this show, you're going to find advanced strategies for understanding YouTube, for building the business mechanics around your YouTube channel, including your email list, or taking what you know and turning it into profitable products. We have amazing guest interviews and all kinds of special surprises that happen consistently on the Think Media Podcast. So to get access for free, just click the link in the description or go to thinkmediapodcast.com. Welcome back to Coffee with Cannell. Listen, I know that I'm probably preaching to the choir here because we're on the Think Media Podcast channel. So we do release our main podcast on this channel. This live stream, this show is where we do coaching um, with um, our uh, students and where we also answer your questions and where we drink coffee or water or Jamaican soda. Uh, but our Think Media podcast um, is one of our favorite things to create. And uh, here's a couple of reviews on Apple. Uh, great communicator, adds value, support this channel. Think Media supports your every step of the way, adding value to the industry. Really enjoy this podcast. Found some insightful concepts that helped me along the journey. If you are a fan of the Think Media podcast, would you consider doing me a favor? Literally, there's 113 people here live. And uh, I know you might watch on YouTube, but if you have the podcast app on your phone, whether you use Spotify or Apple, if you would consider to take a second, even while you're watching this, why I'm doing Q&A, and leave a review. You could leave a text review or just a star rating review. Uh, that would mean the world to me. And so it's the Think Media podcast. Uh, a lot of people do like to listen to it on audio when they're walking their dog, sipping iced tea on the golf course, when they're at the gym, when they're in traffic in Southern California or in Michigan or Chicago. Um, what, what is your formula for coming up with cities? I don't know. I'm just, just Kansas, um, Toronto, Canada. So whether you're just on the road listening, it's always great to listen on audio, but it would you, would you consider doing that type? Yes. In the comments, you could say, yes, Sean, I would love to leave a review, um, on either Spotify or Apple. Of course, Apple is sort of like the 
the home of COD podcast, the genesis of podcasts. Ironically, it's not even the biggest pop podcast platform. Did you know that YouTube is the biggest pl podcast platform? That more listeners consume podcast content on YouTube than on any other platform. Nevertheless, I'm pleading with you for uh, leaving a review on one of the audio platforms because we are publishing it everywhere and uh, and we thank you. Yes. Oh, y'all y'all are, it, it seriously does mean the world to me. We put a ton of work into the podcast. Uh, I was just talking with Kyle Anderson, our uh, the head of Think Media, our creative director, and the lead tech crispy connoisseur of producing the episodes that we film in Vegas when um, I'm in Vegas. Listen, let's do some rapid fire questions here. Is making news like information non evergreen video a waste of time? I come from the VR tech news space, it's what I know. Challenge is applying Think Media techniques to that content. Show, I appreciate the question. Um, number one, it's not a waste of time at all. Number two, it's one of our think media techniques, actually. So I, I respect, I know we we hit search-based evergreen content so hard. I respect you saying that's not one of our techniques. However, I'm not sure if you're part of VRA or not. Inside of VRA Masters, we talk about 16 different techniques that we teach at Think Media. We're probably most known for search-based ranked videos, um, but trend surfing, influence surfing is 100% one of our primary techniques. I think the most dangerous content creators, they don't just use one tool, they use many. So I think a good content catalog has evergreen content that's getting views 24-7, 365 for years, hopefully. But I think smart content creators 100% jump on information, opinion, news-like content because of the rapid views that it can bring. So I would encourage you absolutely create that kind of content. The downside is when does it end? The content doesn't have a shelf life. So you just end, you find yourself on a content creation treadmill and that's what we want to free people from. So I create trend-based, news-based content. Early in the year, I talked about five trends for YouTube. I talked about the, the recession that appeared, uh, didn't seem to happen, but uh, there was a business insider. I do a lot of uh, reaction to business insider articles and things like that. Well, that's trend, that's news jacking, trend surfing, news surfing, uh, influence surfing if you react to different stories. But what do I also have? <sighs> thousands of ranked videos connected to passive income streams that build us a financial foundation of passive income that allows us to truly build what we build at Think Media. In summary, it's not either or, it's both and. Architectural sheet metal, or metal, how do we squash limiting beliefs around the direction we're headed? I don't want to limit my reach for the stars. It's a great question. You know, I think rapid fire list is get some good friends in your life it left to your own thoughts if you don't have good friends that you could process this stuff with uh you know we do have like vra welcome parties we, we do have different meetups that have happened inside of video ranking academy um go to events you know my limiting beliefs kyle and i went to miami last week and uh, that squashed my limiting beliefs. I mean, it just sometimes it takes a while. You got to get in. A, it's worth buying. Take, come to Grow a Video Live next year. Um, and be careful what you listen to, what you read. Um, if possible, create your own mastermind group, like a peer-led mastermind group. Create a group of people that you can get on and just process things with. Listen, all of us left to our own thoughts in isolation. We're, we weren't meant to be alone. And that's not just like a relationship or like romantic relationship thing. I know for me, man, you, you lock, like leave me home over the weekend, just thinking, and I will catastrophize and build out some situations that'll lead me to a place. Then I'll jump on with Melissa and Kyle and like, you know, share where, how dark my worldview has become. They'll be like, bro, relax. I mean, I remember I was processing something where I was like, I think our company is shrinking. Well, I, th I think we're like about to go out of business. This is kind of where I was emotionally. I was like, I don't know. I feel like we're stuck. We're like, we're not growing. We're not. And here's the principle. Do the math. 
And I was talking to somebody and they helped me do the math and they're like, your revenue company wide is up 15%. And I was like, now good or bad, like that's actually not amazing depending on like when you're running margins in a business, but it's not down. That's like, I wasn't even, I literally, I felt like we were in uh, the red. The truth was we were in the black. And so attain distance before deciding the book decisive says sometimes you got to back up and sometimes it's hard to come to positive conclusions now you also might be like sean but i'm in the freaking red dog like my numbers are down my channel's shrinking my dog died my wife left me someone just shot off my right kneecap it's very painful um i'm in the hospital okay you're, you're it's that's a bleak situation that's incredibly bleak the human brain is still powerful though. Like what scenario? Like, did I just break down? That's pretty, you're like, you know what? There's no hope. Uh, no, there is. There's still like, no matter how, there's always hope. But I think, you know, hope is oxygen to the human soul. So I think it's kind of getting back to a place of, of counting your blessings, looking at the bright side, preparing, uh, charting a path forward, no matter how dark it is. If you're negative in your business, if your channel's shrinking, you could complain, worry, um, you know, worries like a rocking chair, just sit there processing it. This just sucks so bad, but that's not helpful. So charting a path is like, okay, I'm gonna keep learning. How could I reinvent myself? I'm gonna find a new approach. I'm gonna find a new strategy. I'm not gonna quit. How do you get into that state? By subscribing to the Think Media Podcast. But I mean, for real, like by by getting around information, people, maybe, you, maybe you're tired. Maybe you need a nap. Tired eyes rarely see bright, a bright future. My mindset when I'm fatigued is negative. And then I take a nap and I'm like, oh, okay. Well, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Um, so I hope some of those things are helpful. And uh, man, the guy, the guy who got his right kneecap shot off. I mean, that was, that's a bad day. I haven't heard that one, JP, but that was, that was a whole nother. Hey, welcome to VRA Elite Corky. Appreciate you. Super grateful for you. I can't wait to see you inside. Um, yeah, plus God activate faith. Hey, good point. And I mean, uh, important for you to bring that up. That is one of my passions, obviously, you know, I had a sequence of things. We come back from Miami, which was sick investing in ourselves. And, you know, again, by the way, if you're not on the waiting list, grow with video live.com. So we're going to have an event next year, the no miss event as content creators, business owners using content. Uh, but then I also came back and I went to church on, I don't miss church on Sunday. So that is a, it's a, I, I don't, I learned from atomic habits. You don't rise to the level of your goals. You follow to the level of your systems. I have systems in my life to guard my soul. I have systems in my life. I put gas in my car consistently. I don't run it to empty. So it's burnt out on the side of the road, broken down. And I got to call AAA or my wife to come bring me a can of gas. Sometimes we push ourselves too hard and we end up sidelined and the putter, our car putters to a stop. Well, I want to make sure that I'm refilling my take on a systematic basis. That's why I've got a gauge. And those gauges are uh, an indicator. Check engine light is telling me to check the engine. Oh, shoot, I need to do the oil. I've been, it's 7,000 miles and I needed to change the oil at 5,000 miles. One of those habits and routines for me was being connected to a local church, but was also kind of crazy was here in Snohomish and uh, the Pacific Northwest Marysville. Our church up here is called the pursuit. And they're having a conference and dude, Monday night was insane. Like we just, I, I literally in my life, I've never been a part of something like this, like the craziest, like for my people of faith. I mean, the presence of God, you talk about an atmosphere where you're like, okay, God is here. Like, like, the you could feel the presence of god the power of god like and the reef like that is something that we were meant the new testament would even teach like that's not just something that happens one time like we're to gather in environments where our faith is built where we can pray for one another where we are refreshed and refilled so yeah you activate that spiritual dimension i'm super glad you brought that one up um in terms of of uh, there's for me, with the amount of emotional roller coaster I'm on as an entrepreneur, dude, if I miss church like one week, <laughs> I like, and you know, you just going through prayer, worship, all that kind of stuff makes reminds me of King David. He's like, you know, all my enemies want to kill me. My whole life is around me. I feel like I'm sinking. 
homie dealt with depression, huge levels of discouragement, huge emotional roller coaster. You could read about it in the Psalms. But then he would found, he, God is my refuge. Uh, you know, I've got a, a rock that is higher than I. I've got an unshakable foundation. Um, I've got a canopy of protection over my life. God is my strength. He prepares my hands for battle and my fingers for war. Even this morning at 8.30 a.m. before our 9 a.m. meeting, I was like, I was in my God's promises for your every need. This book is fire. It's just scriptures that are categorized in different promises. And uh, I was like, you know what I should do? Or am I looking? I should pray. It's kind of funny. Like it's, it is kind of a, ha a habit, but every once in a while, you know, it's been a while. Like when was the last time I even like legitimately prayed? And like, when was the last time I actually read the Bible and didn't just listen to some kind of, you know, and, and it shifted my whole outlook and shifted my spirit and shifted my limiting beliefs, remembering that with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So if you want to be in that all things are possible, you know, type of mindset, I definitely encourage, I know we have people of different beliefs and backgrounds, but like, I definitely encourage you to, uh, starve your fears and feed your faith, get connected to a really good local church and install some of those habits and practices and systems in your life to create unstoppable momentum. All right. We, we got to land the plane, but I got a couple of questions here. VidIQ, but VidIQ suggests matching title and thumbnail. They do. Um, I'm not sure really what you're referencing. I do know that VidIQ uh, has their AI tool that does like auto thumbnails. But VidIQ is a, is a tool to assist an intelligent strategist. This is why, this is why, like, in my opinion, it's not like about like, should I get VidIQ or join your program VRA? Both. Because it's like learning how to think media podcast. It's learning how to think. Um, and even if, but by the way, that's true for AI and AI is incredibly powerful. We were just talking about this. Kyle and I were hanging out talking about, uh, uh, AI using AI. It was a big conversation at this con conference we were at. And we use AI to come up with, we use chat GPT to come up with titles a lot now, but here's what was interesting. There has never been one instance that I have ever used chat GPT, a chat GPT title on a YouTube video. Here's what I mean. I'll use chat GPT or vidIQ's AI coach to brainstorm and get some ideas for 10 titles. Recently, I did three different prompts in chat GPT, came up with 30 titles. But I have never used one of those titles as the final YouTube title. It has always been adjusted, modified, tweaked based on my marketing experience, my psychology experience, studying copywriting, studying YouTube videos, synthesizing it, being a human and not a robot, and then and then processing it from there, which is a summary of, I think, the power of AI in general. The power of AI is it's helping me go faster. It's helping me, I got writer's block. It breaks the, the you know, waterfall starts to flood is I'm like, okay, cool. Now I got some ideas. Okay, cool. Let me go this angle, this angle. Okay. I got all these ideas. Okay. And then I'll write out three or four or five titles based on those. And I'm like, I like that one. So it's powered up my process. It's sped up my process, but it hasn't replaced it. So similarly mid journey or anything else, like just because it's like you enter something in there, you don't necessarily just roll with what it gives you. You need to have those nuances that uh, really only that human perspective can help you with. And so duct tape, unicycle, AI isn't there to work for you. It's there to give you a good baseline and jumpstart your creativity. I'm known to be long-winded and you, that is the exact sentence of what I was trying to say. Thank you. All right. One or two more here. We got house flipping people. Uh, may I know what the rule of third in a thumbnail? I want to apply it up my channel. Okay. So so let's talk about the rule of three in thumbnails. It's not the rule of thirds. 
in thumbnails, although that could be applicable as well. Okay, so the rule of thirds is, a, I think, an important concept for photography, and it could influence your thumbnail design. So the rule of thirds is, you could see where this person is framed. That is the rule of thirds. So it kind of is, it's uh, nice on the human eye. This is a great shot of what a cute dog. And you could see he's kind of, uh, there's there's two pieces to where he, he's framed over here on the left oriented side of the screen, but also the upper left frame as well is where his head is, if that makes sense. Somebody's probably better, same idea here. So you see like the eye line is up there and he's over on like the left side of the screen. That'd be kind of like rule of thirds. Now the rule of three in thumbnails was actually inspired from a study done of Netflix thumbnails, which if you want to talk about world-class thumbnails you could learn from, Netflix and Hulu would be a good thing to study. And what that taught was that the best performing and best practices of creating a thumbnail to get someone to click on a piece of media was that there was only th up maximum three objects or three things happening in the thumbnail. Now, you got to know the rules so you can break them. So you may not always do that. But let me let me speak to how we apply that on Think Media. So Nolan here, what's the three things that are that we see? Nolan's face is one. The phone is two. And the content on the phone is three. Um, let's look at another obvious three. You have Sean here on the right. You've got the person. You've got a play button. And you've got the text. Now, we also might apply that to, we say three or less words, arguably no words, portable zoom, two words, and the the, the lens. Here's uh, Ruslan Studio, the subscribers, the person, and then the don't use editing software. There's three things there. So we try to limit it to prime day tips, text, the boxes, two, Sean, three. Now, it's just a rule to know because what we're we're after is clarity, simplicity. There's other contexts where you got to know the rules to break them. I don't think it works in every situation. Today's video, Sean, the money, the YouTube, but you also got day 30 and the arrow. But that's basically three things. But yesterday's video, you really have just the one camera, but the 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 strategy was these are all, look how many cool things this one camera has. So if this is the best camera under $1,500, which by the way, if you're looking for a new camera, head over to the Think Media channel and check out uh, Omar's review of the A6700, it's it's fire. And uh, just dropped from Sony. But the simple, it's still a simple thumbnail, but flip screen, viewfinder, smart cold shoe, sharp 4K, no overheating, sensor stabilization, and awareness of the desires people want. Like on Sony, they want no overheating, and that's been a problem. Now you also got, excuse me, ZBE one, just the camera. Yes, almost heart holding it, but he's it's kind of like two things. Or you have the background, the camera being held by hands, and then the ninety day review text. Um, and then clearly here, I think aesthetically, this is still simple. Technically, there is three microphones because you have the receiver and the two microphones, the word game changer, and the red background. So there's four there, but like that's why it's like okay. Rule of three, but oh my gosh, if I break it, I'm gonna, my channel will get shut down. I'll get a copyright strike if I violate the rule of three. Well, too many people are doing like the rule of 26. Like they got a hundred words, all these things. They got their logo. For most of us, it's just sim make it simpler, cl cleaner, zoom in a little bit, but that's the rule of three. So the like the the rule of three is, is try to have as, as few things happening in the thumbnail as possible but it's okay to break the rule. Again, 10, 10 smart grown update, uh, uh, updates. Here, four are shown. Hopefully, there's diversity of the four things because there's a microphone, a, a, a battery pack, another microphone, and a light. Also, dark background, dark battery, dark microphone. So blue circle creates contrast so that you can actually see those items pop out of the background. Otherwise, they would disappear. So just also trying to make even your color contrast something that you could do. Nolan's laptop, Nolan being surprised, and then paper flying around. More than one, you know, one piece of paper, obviously, but 
but simple still because you see all the different things that are happening there. Really good question. The rule of three is powerful. Great thumbs, very clear. Some niches very slightly. I agree. I totally agree. And I think I think that success leaves clues. You should search your niche and search your topic to see what the top ranked videos are. And some niches get away with a lower quality standard of thumbnails. Just meaning some of the tr ranked trellis videos we saw earlier were very, not like impressive thumbnails, but they had a million views. Because if it also can just be clear and simple and speak to the audience um, for what they want, what do you do if you have a show with three hosts and they are in the thumbnail? Mm. JP, do you have just asked the ultimate question? I think that Frodo literally sought off, sought out Gandalf to try to answer this question, and it stumped Gandalf. He didn't know the answer. I'm thankful that I do. Um, what you do, JP, is number one. If you had a, a guest and they were a celebrity guest, sometimes I recommend just put the celebrity guest in the thumbnail. So the question is, can you put just one person in the thumbnail? Here's the bigger question. Let's let's take a step back. Take all personalities and all egos out of it. So let's just assume that your three hosts don't have such big egos that they would be hurt if they weren't in the thumbnail. Like, why don't you show me in the thumbnail? It's not fair. You think you're better than me. Why are you... The real question should be, what is going to be most effective in any organization? Oh, you get more stage time than me. Why do you get mic time? Like work at a church. Oh, yeah, I'm being overlooked. Relax. What is best for the organization? Now, that might be true. But the question is, like, what's just going to make it perform best? So, the like, if you have two hosts, but one is, like, the main one, and no one's insecure, then you may just put the one host in the thumbnail. You don't have to force the two hosts in the thumbnail or the three hosts. Um, two, I think that also, so here's what we ask on Think Media Podcast. Back in the day, we used to, I used to have a co-host. But what we would realize was like, I was still obviously the main trainer person host. So we had an option, me solo me and the co-host, me and the guest, guest only. And then the question is, which is most effective? So like we have all, Alex Ramosi on the podcast. Alex Ramosi is the only person in the thumbnail. Now you might ask, well, what would be most valuable though is the fact that I want to see Sean with Alex. Okay, great. Well, that's a theory. Then let's try that out because I see Alex everywhere and he could just be by himself, but I want to see him with Sean because Sean is going to ask a particular type of questions. Okay, cool. Um, you know, three, uh, Colin Samir is a good example. They, they are two hosts and a lot of times they have both faces, not three, but when they have their guests, it's usually just the guest. Okay. So just different things you could potentially think through. So I think you can experiment and then I think different, I mean, all in podcast. This is just like quality rises to the top, no matter how many cups of coffee you pour. Stuff like by all arguments, these they should not win an award for thumbnail design. But look at the views. And I think this is also because of who they are. You've got four legends <laughs> in investing, uh, talking about stuff, you know, and so uh people are here for a lot of other reasons they're here for the practicality of it so that's where some of the stuff i gave you jp is also if you haven't like built and sold a tech company for a hundred million dollars if you haven't you know it, it's kind of true like if elon musk started a youtube channel his thumbnails probably wouldn't matter so that's the mistake some people project is they're like oh when the all in podcast their thumbnails aren't that good. Yeah, well, what company did you build? How many venture startups have you done in Silicon Valley and, and are you worth a billion dollars? Because if you aren't, then maybe people aren't like listening to you yet. They're not paying attention to you as much. So you maybe need to learn good marketing tactics and think about some different things because you're building from scratch. And this person over here that's not doing best practices has a lot of a celebrity authority and that's where they're coming from. Said with love. So then I think that that's what I would consider is some of those things. And, and do you need to force all three guests in it? And does that end up becoming the brand? 
success leaves clues. You could study other channels. Um, there's a lot of different ways you could slice it up. Um, if you are the three amigos and the three superheroes, then I think it's, does anybody have any recommendations um, here? Two of the hosts are celebrities, but the third host drives the conversation. It's the expert, no guest. Does anybody have any recommendations of people pulling off really good thumbnails with three people in it? What's that one big one? Nelk Boys or whatever? What's their podcast? Again, I think that you've got Full Send Podcast. Oh, right. Uh, okay, so, but notice, right? Okay, so this is a good example of three. They're getting away with three, but it's usually, so they got, it looks like they maybe swap out the hosts. I think, forgive me for not knowing these guys, the guy on the right here looks like he's pretty consistently on the right. But look at the guy on the left is different. Oh, no, it's the same guy. But I know that I'm pretty sure there's like four hosts or something here. But then I mean, then I got Nate Diaz, right? So you're going to put that person in the middle. Um, and so you also could get away with just Hulk Hogan in this case, and then potentially. So yeah, I mean, you know, switch it up, do whatever you want and, and, and try different deals. But I think that that, um, that example, yeah, PBD podcast is interesting. They also, the, I feel like that's also like a brand trust one. Like they all, they'll call it home team, right? They do home team. That's a clean way of doing four and it says home team, but no, like also I would say this, that title sucks. And I love PBD to death, like home team, PBD podcast, episode 301. Like, what are we talking about now? You know what I've learned from them though, is they actually will go back and relabel some of their podcasts and like backfill the actual topics. Um, apparently not very often, but, uh, sometimes I've seen them do this, like, yeah, maybe here like DeSantis set to announce on Twitter with Elon Musk. Um, and sometimes, but what's the point? A, you actually listen to this because it's part of your routine. It's current news, it's current po politics from their standpoint, and they've built trust. B, they cut the heck out of clips. Like they, there's clips, man. 55 uploads a month on this channel. So it's really smart because you have the base episode, but then you got Valuetainment has got another 89 uploads. Okay. And then if they're still doing Valuetainment short clips, let's see what sounds of freedom. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's it's see. Valuetainment short clips. So 55 plus 89 plus 36. Okay, so 140 uploads just from those three channels. And that's that's the uploads. You've got clips. I, I bet that counts shorts. What's the point? Thinking about your thumbnail and your three guests and your three personalities are just one entry point into your world. So if, if you're building up trust with that brand, then keep having excellent content like the PBD podcast and people couple hundred thousand viewers are watching home team PBD podcast episode 301. I don't even know what I'm clicking on that for, but if it's part of my routine to always listen to that podcast on my commute as part of my daily content, they're my guys for news. Then that's they're just like all in podcasts. They built the trust and maybe you love the home team more than you even love a guest. Um, but as far as converting and meeting people you've never met before chances are they're not going to watch a two-hour episode they have no idea who pbd is or any of that stuff they're going to watch because he brings a celebrity guest on oh my gosh who's this guy who had cuomo on and they're going to watch that or even more they're going to watch a viral clip covering a hot topic and then be like oh man i love how this guy processes issues and i love how you know he communicates things let me actually check out the full episode and then maybe somebody falls in love with the full episode. Woof. Um, okay. So I appreciate you, JB. Uh, thank you. And for the question and the cool content uh, conversation here at the end. Uh, can't get, you know, trying to get to as many questions as possible, but thank you for all the questions today. Thank you for the guests today. If you haven't subscribed and turn on notifications, that's a must do. Why? Because 
Coffee with Candle show is happening pretty much every other week now. Plus, we've got your weekly podcast and we got clips on the channel and we are actually continuing to have your feedback. In fact, in fact, I'm curious, do you watch every episode of the Think Media podcast? Do you watch the clips? Have you been liking the clips? Did you even notice we're doing clips? Are you mad about the clips? Anything that you think we could do here to improve on this channel, I'm all ears. And we, of course, can watch the replay of this chat as we land the plane today. But we are working on leveling up and improving all of our content for you. And I uh, want to send you love and respect and gratitude today. The Coffee with Candle show is... Uh, is listen to every episode robert my fave thank you so much appreciate you and uh super grateful uh we are we're working on improving get one percent better with all the stuff that we do and so smash like subscribe if you're not subscribed and i can't wait to see you in a future episode of the coffee with cannell show my name is sean cannell rhymes with youtube channel and we will talk soon peace